Got particles all over me. Hey Power Director peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love, you know, the Power Director love you're looking for from Power Director University. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on the particle designer. So let's jump right into Power Director Ultimate and make it happen. Here we are in Power Director 16 and I'm about to show you guys how to get your particle design correct. Before we get started, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to Power Director University to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. And I need you to let me know in the comment section below, what's your favorite particle effect? Let's do this, people. I'm going to start off by going right into this, diving into the particle room by clicking on the particle room icon. So this screen consists of three sections. You got the content list, you got the particle effect thumbnails, and you got the options section. So let's go through the content section first. As you can see in the content list, I have a bunch of particle effects to choose from. The amount of effects you have will differ based on which version of PowerDirector 16 you have. If you purchased additional creative design packs from the Cyberlink store, or if you downloaded free particle effects from the Director Zone. If you look on here, we have all the content, and then you have these breakdowns of all the different types of particle effects that you can choose from. I can click on them and just open up all of this loveliness but I'm going to stay on all content for now. So now let's talk about the option section. So up here, the first option you have is to import media. So if I were to click on that, I get to import the particle objects or download more particle effects. And then next to that, we have to upload any particle effects that we create to the director zone. So you can share those things that you create right back to others and let them go ahead and utilize the great particle effects that you make. And then you have the drop down window to select from the different content. Basically, these are the same options that you have on the content list on the side. Then you have the option to create a new particle object. And you have the option to modify the current particle template that you have selected in the thumbnail view. Then you have your library menu. If you click on that, it just gives you different ways to sort and view the library of the particle effects. And then you have the adjustment to the thumbnail size. And then you can search the library for any particular uh, particle effect that you want. Then down here, you have the thumbnails of all of the different particle effects. If you select a thumbnail, it's going to give you a preview in the preview window to the right of that particle effect so you can see what it looks like before you go ahead and apply it to your timeline. Are we good with all of that people? I thought we were. I'm going to go ahead and select a particle effect. Let's select blue bubbles. I'm going to left click that with my mouse and I'm going to drag it down into the timeline. So once I have it here in the timeline, we have some options that open up right above the timeline. And I'm going to click on Designer. And when I do that, it opens up the Particle Designer. And there are even more fantastic options here for us to choose from. So here on the left where it says Selected Objects, it has the particle that we have currently selected. Underneath that, you have some other options. You got your properties tab. You got your motions tab. You have your options bar. You got your preview window. And then you have your timeline. So let's start off talking about the properties tab. 
So the first option under the properties tab is the emit method. So this tells us how the particles will emit from the center point. So this is the center point here, and this is where they're going to emit from. And because we have a line that goes all the way across, it's actually going to emit from this line, and we have selected line. So if I play this, you see they come up from that same line that we had So I'm gonna click on stop, it comes back. So now we can choose between these other ones. We've got circle. We've got mask. So we would select a specific mask and then we can hit play and see that. So for this one, we're gonna choose point and point it comes out of a point and kind of spreads out from there. Now, I'm going to click on stop. If you ever want to make a change to something, you got to click on stop to make that change uh, stick or apply whatever change you made. So what I want to do is I want to move this to a different position on the screen. So I'm going to place my cursor over the emitter until I see this little crosshair. So I'm going to left click on my mouse. I'm going to drag this to the position that I want. So I want it over here in this corner, right off the screen. So I can't see where it's emitted from. But now I also want to turn it. So in order to turn it, I need to place my cursor over this red triangle. And then I can hold down my mouse and turn it, or my left mouse button, and I can turn it. And then if I wanted to spread it, I can place my cursor over these red dots, and I can actually spread out how it emits. Okay. So we'll leave it right there. I think that's pretty good. Awesome. So now, if I were to hit stop, it'll lock everything in, and I hit play, and we'll see that now everything emits from that point. All right, so I'm gonna hit stop, and now I'm gonna go to particle style. So particle style changes the style of the particles, as the name so clearly states. And right now we have it as bubble. And so basically it shows that they kind of bubble, move like bubbles and shake and squiggle out. We have ball. So I'm gonna hit stop. And if I hit play for ball, shows you how that goes. And then we have things like scale and spread and all kind of beautiful things. So here's spread. Now I'm gonna choose scale. I'll hit play and you'll see that with scale it kind of starts off big and scales down. So I'm gonna choose that one. You got all these choices for your particle style. And then we have add delete particles. So if I click on that, See here that it has the one particle that's in here and you can't have no particle so it's not going to give me the option to delete anything. But if I click add and I click uh, insert a default image and I'm, it's going to take me right to the default images for particle designs and I'm going to choose this football and I'll click open. And you see that some of these bubbles have changed into footballs. And now if I click on the football, I have the option to delete it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on delete and leave them all as bubbles. Then we have modify parameters. So if I click on that, there are several options that I can change. I could change the emit rate. So if I change this from like, let's say 50, to 1000. You see that there's less of them here. So if I hit play now, see how that changes how they emit. Changes back to 50. I'm going to hit stop. 
and change this back to 50 and hit enter. Then we have max count. So this is the maximum number of particles that will be on the screen. If I change it to like 100, see how it jumps up to 100, change it to 19, goes back down. You have life. Life is how long the particle lasts. If I change it from 9,500 to 1,000, you see that when I play it now, they'll end a lot sooner. Yeah, I didn't even make it up to the top of the screen. So I'm going to change it back to 95. Then we have life variation. So this creates some variation in how long the particles live. So you can make it zero and they'll all live for the same amount of time. And the higher you make it, the more varied the life will be of each one of the particles. So let's say I did make it zero and I hit play. Then they should all come on the screen and come off the screen at the same time. So next we have size. And of course that changes the size of the particles. As you can see there. And then we have size variation, which once again changes the variation of the different sizes of the particles. The lower you have it, the less they're going to vary. The higher that you have it, the more they're going to vary. Then we have speed. Changes the speed of how fast the items move across the screen. Speed variation. I think you get the gist of how the variation works. Just varies the speed of the different particles. And then we have the rotation speed. If you have any particles that rotate and the rotation speed variation. So I'm not going into all of those because they're pretty self-explanatory. Next we have 3D settings. So you can turn on 3D depth and you see it adds some depth to them. Change the amount of depth for the 3D setting as well. And next we have color. So you can change the color of the particle. Turn the color off. All that goodness. Change the opacity of the color. And you can enable particle overlay. All that goodness. And then you have fades. You can enable a fade in of the particles and a fade out of the particle if you want to. And you can see it enables them on the timeline when I click on those settings. So that's the properties tab. Next we have the motion tab. And here you can select different motions or paths that the particles will take. So right now there's not really a path assigned to it, but if I picked one, then you would see that now the particles would emit from this point and they would follow that path. If I click on play, you'll see them do that. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. So you have all these different paths to choose from. I'm going to click back on the properties tab here. Now here on the option bar, we can add a new particle object. So if I click on that, I can choose an object and click on open. And now I can move this wherever I want it to go. I could change all the settings for this one to make it different than the other particle object. And you can see here on the timeline that it added a new particle layer. And if I wanted to remove this, I could just click on this, right click it and choose remove. 
I could do that with any layer here on the timeline. Then we have add image. If I click on this, I can go to wherever I like and select an image. And then I can do whatever I want to with it, place it where I want, whatever. And then once again, I can remove that. Then if we want, we can select a background. We can add a default background image or add a custom background image. I can then remove it. So we have that option there. Then we have the undo and the redo. Uh, we have a selection mode, which is what our cursor is in now. We have drag mode, so we can drag the image around, like so. We have zoom out, zoom in, and then we can select a different percentage, select fit. All those good things up in the options bar. And then down in the timeline, we could choose between clip timeline or the movie timeline, which are the same right now because the only thing I have in the timeline is the clip. And then as I showed you, we can select any of these layers and remove items. And then if we have something, a layer that's adjustable, then we can make changes and add keyframes. So if I wanted to change the color, you go here and let's say I move my playhead to a new position. I could add a new keyframe here with a different color if I want it. And so now what will happen is they'll start off blue and then they'll change to red. And then it'll change back to blue. So I could do that. I could use keyframes in several different ways. And then we have the option to make the timeline bigger or smaller. And also I can make different things on the timeline visible or I can remove them so you can't see them like the background or the bubbles. So once you're done making all your changes to your particle effect, you just click on OK. And you are good to go. And that, my friends, is how you use the particle designer in PowerDirector 16. All right, Power Director peeps, I want to thank you for watching that video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. Now, I want to send a shout out to one of our subscribers, M477P0775. M477P0775 makes gaming videos. So if you're into gaming, head on over to his channel, check out a couple of his videos, and if you're feeling what he's dealing, make sure that you subscribe. If you guys want to get a shout out like M477P0775 did, Head over to the video description and fill out our shout out request form. If you have a tutorial you'd like us to make, head over to the video description and fill out our tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click on it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. When you click on the bell, you get notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. And that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.